So one of the great things about Mexico City nightlife is that you're not just limited to the usual kind of going out for dinner or to the bar or a club. There's actually a whole range of really, really cool kitchen alternative activities that you can take part in, like the one I'm about to show you right now. So I'm on the Turiluchas, which is a special tour bus dedicated to taking you to Arena Mexico, which is where the Lucha Libre or Mexican wrestling takes place. And there's a lot of really other kitsch stuff that you can do too. There's Plaza Garibaldi. It's like a square where you can go and listen to mariachis playing live. Even the, they'll even serenade you. Uh, there's also the Torre Latino. It used to be the tallest building in Mexico. It's not anymore, but it's still worth a visit because at the very, very top, it's got a 360 degree lookout where you can get views of the whole city. So just for you guys, I know I'm so good. I'm going to check out all of these kitsch activities and tell you all about it. So I'm so excited about tonight. I want to find out exactly what this wrestling's all about and especially why is it so popular? So I finally made it to Arena Mexico, or the Cathedral of Wrestling as it's known to Mexican fans. And as you can see behind me, the, the game has started. The fans are getting really into it. I can hear them booing and cheering behind me. There's some really dirty tricks happening. They're pulling at each other's pants. I can hear the sound as they smack off the ground. I have expected it was all an act, but it really looks kind of sore. So I think I'm going to get myself a popcorn, some beer, and do like the Mexicans do and start getting stuck in. So I'm here awaiting the arrival of the Blue Demon, one of the most emblematic figures in uh, Lucha Libre here in Mexico. And the weird thing about these guys, these wrestlers, is that they're really treated like celebrities. As you can see behind me, they've rolled out the blue carpet. The place is full of press waiting for his imminent arrival. And everybody's waiting to get a glimpse of this masked hero whose fame actually transcends the divisions between social classes, um, which I find really, really interesting. So I'm excited to see how he's going to arrive. So another really fun activity I recommend if you're in downtown Mexico City is that you come here to the Torre Latino. You can't miss it, it towers above all the other buildings in the historic center. At one stage this was the highest skyscraper in the whole of Latin America. It no longer is, but it is still 44 stories high, that's 188 meters. So it gives you an amazing perspective of the whole city and how it's laid out. They also give you this little map that marks out all the major monuments and attractions so you can see exactly what you're looking at. Um, and it's something that you don't often get to see from down below. And they have these telescopes so you can get a really good close-up view of what you're looking at. So continuing on with our theme of kitsch nights out in Mexico City, I've come to Plaza Garibaldi to the Museum of Tequila and Mezcal and I've come to learn a little bit more about agave spirits and who else could explain it better than Cecilia, otherwise known as La Niña de Mezcal or the Mezcal Girl. Cecilia, what can you tell me about where we are right now? Right now we are at Plaza Garibaldi and this is a center square that was f formed in 1850. Wow. But it wasn't until after the revolution that it became known really for the, just being the hub of mariachi bands. And also everything Jalisco, which means tequila. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> so um, what we're going to do tonight is that we're going to go have a drink upstairs and learn a little bit more about how to drink mezcal and tequila. You don't need to ask me twice. Let's go. <laughs> So one of the most difficult questions you're going to have to ask yourself when you come to Mexico City is tequila or mezcal? Cecilia, can you tell me what is the difference between tequila and mezcal? Yes. Well, the main difference between tequila and mezcal would be the type of agave that they use to produce it. Tequila can be made from one particular kind, which is called Tequilana Weber, and mezcal can be made from over 30 different varietals. So, in the world of mezcal, you have a lot more diversity in terms of varietals, flavors, aromas. Um, wow. So another main difference is that tequila, well, because of the mass production, that na the, the the bigger demand, um, the process to make tequila is a little bit more industrialized in mezcal. Okay. So in mezcal, we still keep those traditional production processes. Wow! So it's like really artisan. Yes. Wow. Okay. Very artisan. So I think the best way to do, to find out would be to taste. Let's taste. <laughs> so which is which? Um, so here we have a tequila, and okay. here we have mezcal. Okay. So I think we should start with the tequila, which will probably have a little bit more smoother flavor. Okay. So, cheers. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Very, a little bit sweet. It's really good. It's not like the kind of tequila slammers that we get. No. <laughs> I'm glad you mentioned that because it's very important to not shoot tequila or mezcal ever. Really? <laughs> well, I mean... The, the way to really enjoy, appreciate tequila or mezcal when you're drinking it properly is to first you have to smell it and take in all those aromas that the agave has. And, um, and then when we taste it, we want to keep it in our mouth for a little while and kind of just, you know, take it all in, really absorb all those flavors. Well, I'll try again. <laughs> mm, it's, it's 
it's really easy to drink. It's really smooth. Very smooth, yeah. This so is a very good tequila. So then on to the mezcal. And the main difference that we're going to find here from tequila to mezcal is you'll probably notice that there's a little smoky flavor, and that's because of the cooking process of the agave. So most mezcal producers will cook their agave underground in a roasting pit. And then that burning wood will give that smoky flavor to the to the ah, mezcal. Ah, okay, it makes sense, no? That makes sense. Yeah, I see what you mean. It's kind of it's smoky, almost. It's a little bit smoky. Well, I think if I had to choose, I prefer the mezcal. <laughs> I think they cheers. prefer the mezcal as well. <laughs> so how do I say cheers here? Salud. 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 <laughs> So there you have it. I've had the best of the, mo the most kitsch nights you can imagine in Mexico City. I've been to the Lucha Libre, the men in the sparkly pants. I've been to <laughs> Plaza Garibaldi. I can't believe it. You have mariachis. You pay them. They serenade you. You can be serenaded in the square. Uh, what else have we done? We went up the Torre Latina to get those amazing panoramic views of the, of the whole of the city. So you're not going to be short of kitsch entertainment while you're here. I'll put everything on the blog. In the meantime, thanks to La Niña del Mezcal, Cecilia. Thank you so much, my Thank fellow so blogger. Much. Check out her blog as well. What's your blog? Um, it's laninadelmezcal.com. I'll put that on the blog as well. Yeah. Good night, guys. Bye. Bye.